What's up, YouTube and other privileged countries with internet? This is DevTrass coming at you with episode two of the devlog series for Space Imperialist Idol. And thank you for everybody who watched episode one. I sent it out to my family and friends on Facebook. I don't know if uh, anyone even uses Facebook anymore, but I'm an aging millennial, so I'm hanging on to that like it is the sinking ship of the Titanic. So uh, if there's another social media website that comes along, I'm sure that I will be far too scared of my privacy and China getting a hold of my data to ever use it. So, uh, you know, Facebook may be the last bastion for any of my documentation of my social life. Anyhow, um, I got some great feedback from a guy named, let's pull this up, uh, Starmonger1 on Reddit. I posted this, the devlog to the Incremental Games subreddit. And he pointed out that I didn't really go into the mechanics too much. So I will be doing that going forward. And a big reason for that was I haven't implemented a lot of mechanics in my current prototype. And so I'm still very much in the design phase. I'm mapping out what I want the game to look like, how I want the game to function. And from my perspective, it's really imperative to get that right and dialed in before we start, we start coding, right? Because especially as an inexperienced game developer, I know from my experience of coding in Visual Basic and Excel, knowing really what your output is going to be is very, very helpful in the beginning. So I will go forward and definitely highlight the mechanics that I have in there. So we'll go over that a little bit later in the video. But this week has been just... I mean, I sat there for two days trying to figure out how to solve one minor problem, one minor problem. Let's take a look, okay? Let's take a look at this. Let's put this, throw this in presentation mode. Shablam! Oh, look at those infinite, that infinite galaxy of DevTrass. Can you imagine? What if there were that many DevTrass in the world? Ah, the things we could get done. Anyhow, so we're pulling up the Excel sheet here, and oh man, here we go. So recorded first devlog. This is where we left off. It was day 16. Now we're on day 17. And we watched an intro to OOP. And for you, those of you that don't know what OOP is, OOP is object-oriented programming. And essentially it's where you program to create uh, like classes, if you will. So the, the the introduction that I watched, I was I was completely thrown off. Not thrown off. I was lost. Um, I was lost for the first like 10, 15 minutes of this 20 minute video. Um, basically, if you think of it like you're going to create a class, right? A warrior, a mage, a rogue, whatever it is. Every class has its own attributes. Maybe the warrior has higher HP. So you program that every warrior that's created has, you know, a specific input of HP. Um, in, in rogues, they have, maybe they have less HP, but they have, you know, higher dexterity. So you input that, you say that one of their inputs is going to be a higher dexterity. That's kind of the basic rundown that I understood. I've heard object-oriented programming is a really big thing in Python. So um, I, uh, you know, I kind of, eh, I, I, I was so lost. So I was looking for a solution. And the reason that I was looking at object-oriented programming is because the problem I was trying to solve was, if you remember, in my previous devlog, uh, I had this going on in my game. You'll notice that mining will change to cookie. But I wanted to get rid of that text that said cookie and i wanted to change it to or and every time you clicked on the planet if there was a factory on the planet that was built that was already adding to the or, or sorry not a factory if there if there was a drill added to that planet i wanted it to not only automatically add into the count of the or but every time you clicked on it i wanted to add that into the count of the or seems very simple right well, this is kind of what it was like for me searching for a solution on that simple problem. So you get the idea. I was very lost. I had looked all over my house. I paced back and forth in the shower, dumped all of my shampoo out in frustration, uh, probably clogged the drains. I don't know. And I kept thinking, how can I make this happen? I knew that it had to be a conditional. I knew it. I was like, if, you know, all I need the planet to do is to see if there is a, is a drill equipped to the planet, then 
while it's automatically producing ore, add one ore to that count that's already there. And I knew the text thing, the text thing wasn't going to be a big deal. So I quickly changed the text to say cookie from cookie to ore. And I went through back through all the code and I got rid of all the code that said bakery um, and cookie and changed that to ore. So essentially I kept the cache stuff from the cookie clicker tutorial and I redid the code so that all the cookie stuff was now ore stuff. No problem. So I'm watching this intro to OOP, right? Got through it. I was like, okay, well, I, knew, I, I know that I need OOP for planets because, you know, for every planet, there's going to be, you know, different types of resources that are available on the planet, like the different types of amounts of resources. I have the four resources, right? You have cash, you have ore, you have parts, and you have trade goods. And depending on what you want to farm from that planet, you know, you can some, maybe some you can farm all four, maybe some um, you can only farm, you know, one or two or three, and some you'll have a higher modifier. So like if you build an ore on certain like mining rich planets, maybe you'll get like two times the ore that you would on any other planet. So still working through that. So that was, that was the first day. I also started the RPG in Unity tutorial from Brackies. Now Brackies is a phenomenal, um, creator and he's definitely helped i think like hundreds of thousands of people in unity with his tutorials highly recommend you check out his channel if you want to get into unity because he has very very great tutorials on like what the code does why the code is doing what it's doing and it's very user friendly for people that aren't familiar with programming or coding so that was the first day i spent an hour and 17 minutes right there uh, hour and 17 minutes 49 seconds on all of that right Still don't have a solution to my problem. The reason I started the RPG tutorial in Unity is because I thought, okay, like I said, the, each planet is going to need some sort of like list of attributes. And so I thought, okay, well, I want to, I want it to be like an inventory. Each planet has an inventory. If it has a factory equipped, then it's going to do X. And the X in this instance is adds one to the ore. So then the next day, hour and 21 minutes, and you can see this massive wall of text that happened, right? So I watched the second episode of RPG in the RPG Unity tutorial from Brackies. I realized at this point, um, we have gotten so far into the making of this. Um, I mean, we're talking about character movement. You're talking about, you know, how the, the nav meshes that are laid out on the environment. You're talking about interactables like chess. And a, I couldn't really exactly follow along with all the code. So I was like, all right, I'm still, I'm lost again. Um, I kind of was wrapping my head around object-oriented programming by this point. And then, so then I was like, okay, I can't, this is not going to work for me because if, I could skip to like an inventory tutorial. But from the way that Brackies lays out his videos, I knew that there was probably going to be something in that inventory tutorial that would be reliant on something in the previous video. So I didn't want to do that. I was like, all right, let's, let's try a different approach. So I went to just his fundamentals, right, on how to make a game in Unity by Brackies. Well, I realized uh, after watching the first video and the introduction to the series that I've already watched it, and I knew that it wouldn't have what I needed in it. Uh, then I watched a few minutes of an introduction to 2D game design by Daniel Wood. Very outdated. It was from 2016, and I don't know if you guys know this, but Unity updates, I swear, like four times a day. Um, even just today, I'm waiting on a Unity update uh, to happen. I skipped over it just so I could record this video. Then I watched three-fourths of a 20-minute Unity uh, 2D C-sharp tutorial by Charger Games. Now, that had some really good content that talked about a lot of the fundamentals, um, and it started to get into some platforming stuff. So if I never need to, to tackle a platform, I'm definitely going back to that video. Then I was so desperate, I started to read a Unity blog of how to develop a game in Unity. And this came from, like I think, the official website of Microsoft uh, that supports C-sharp. Uh, that, but that was unhelpful. So by this point, I had watched, you know, no less than five tutorials. And I was getting frustrated. And I didn't know how to tackle this problem. So finally, I was just like, okay, I, I, what I need to do is I know that there's a solution that I can figure out if I just go through this code. So I sat down, I went through all of the code. And so we can take a look at that. So here is my game in Unity, right? So you can see the stuff that says like global drill, global ore, that's all stuff that I changed uh, name-wise in Unity. 
But let's go to, I believe it was Global Drill or it was Main, main Planet Click. Yeah, Planet Click. So we'll take a look at this script here. Great non Visual Studio. Let's go. Let's get the Visual Studio. All right. Pull this over here so it's just a little bit um, easier to see. So here is what I added. Global or count. No, it wasn't in here. Nope. See, I'm already lying to you. I'm lying to you. Rotate sky. Maybe it was a global drill or global or. Global or. Internal or. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no, no. It wasn't planning quick. Look at this. I don't even know my code. This is why I can't figure things out. So here's what I did. Um, I looked back through my code and I was like, all right, there's an if statement that I need. So here's what I did. Um, when you click on a planet, um, it's going to, I have these two variables, text box and planet sound that relates to the display on um, the home screen and the sound that it plays. So it'll play the planet sound, which is just a, it's left over from the cookie clicker tutorial. So I'll end up changing that. Um, and the global cache, uh, the cache count is added. Um, one is added to the global cache count. So every time you click on it, plus one to cache. Now, what I added, this is this is what I was stressing about so hard. And if I would have just taken a minute to think about like my existing code and how this interacts, um, I, I would have been able to figure this out much quicker than going through all these tutorials. So it's saying if the auto or now auto or is the factory or the drill, excuse me. So if there's a drill out there on the planet, it's auto creating or um, one time uh, for every one second. Uh, dot creating or so that's so auto or is the script named creating or is the method that it's doing so if that is true so if auto or is creating or then the global or or count one is added to that so let's see what that looks like in action right here's my game you can see that I also added these three buttons and so the drill this is what we're going to be looking at okay we press play Boom, here's our game. Now, obviously the dimensions are all wonky because this is, uh, it's out, it's maximized, which is fine. So you click, boom, 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 you get some money. Now you can buy the drill. So you can see because of the maximization, um, it's pulling in these, these assets into strange levels. But you buy the drill, okay? So now once you buy the drill, what I need to do is I need to add a factory that is like stuck on the planet, right? And so what my my vision is that there's going to be like four spaces on each planet that you can build on. So like each quadrant of the planet will have a space. You can click on the quadrant and then you can choose to build something on that quadrant. So in this case, it would be what this button is doing where you buy a drill. So as you can see, when you uh, have a factory go or excuse me, a drill going, I keep confusing factory because in the beginning, factories were going to make ore, which didn't make any sense. Anyways, so ore. Uh, or is made by drills. So you can see that it's going up by one. And so now when you click, it also goes up by one. Look at that breakthrough. This is the greatest game I've ever seen, guys. Uh, buy it right now. I'm just going to release it. Uh, we're going to release it tomorrow. And uh, it'll be $69.99 on Steam specifically because I've never seen anything so good in my entire life. But yeah, so this is what I was stressing out over um, this entire time was just getting that to work. And I, I really think this is an important step in game development because it is it is such a steep learning curve in the beginning. And I did this exact same thing when I was learning Excel. And the only thing that I was ever shown in person and the reason that I started down this whole uh, desire to, to code was in Excel, there is this button here. You see this? This is the record macro button. What does a record macro button do? It records all of your actions in Excel and then it makes it a macro. Now a macro, if you don't know, it is a, a script that allows you to do repeated actions. So this punch in, punch out button, those are macros. And what they do is they trigger the script, uh, these buttons specifically trigger the script that is a macro um, in order to make something happen. So that was all I've ever shown, okay? This is how you do it. So now when you do, when you hit record macro, then you can actually go into Visual Basic using Alt F11, and you can see the script here 
Um, and you, you know, you'll name your macro when you record it. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't really have any idea. And I remember being so frustrated because the simplest things I would have to Google, like, how do I select a cell, you know? Oh, you know, selection, uh, you know, current, current cell dot selection or range, you know, dot selection. So those things, and it was very frustrating in the beginning. Now, right now I can, you know, I can code a lot of stuff just from memory because it's such, you know, it's very, very common repeated actions. But I know that I'm going to have that same style of learning curve uh, with building this. So um, that's totally fine. I look forward to doing that. But man, is it so frustrating in the beginning. So if anyone's watching this and you've never coded before and you want to like dive into Unity and you're watching these tutorials and you, you're saying to yourself, like, I just don't understand. Know that that is all a part of the process and that is absolutely supposed to happen. Um, and that's kind of why I touched on in the last devlog the cookie clicker tutorial, um, it's, it's better to know, um, kind of the fundamentals of programming. And that was, that's the whole bit, the biggest reason why I had this, the issue in the first place is I, I haven't figured out the, the way that I need to ask my question into Google in order to get the answer that I need. So, um, that's why I'm just watching tutorials. And so I think what I should have done, um, and I might do maybe is learn some of the, the fundamentals of C sharp you know, like the, all the different syntax, um, the, the, the different objects and the different, uh, what do you call them, terms, because that's kind of what I'm struggling with right now. Like why, why is something uh, a static object? Why is something um, a global object, a global static object, yada, yada. So anyways, that's, that was my big breakthrough. And I was so stoked when that happened. I mean, I turned to my fiance and I was like, I got it. I did it. There it is. Uh, this game is complete. We're done. Um, so, but I, I knew that at that point, like those are the, the moments in game development that I think really are super motivating because you figure out the problem, you, you find your solution. Um, so, uh, I know that that's, that's what's going to be going forward. And now finally, uh, the last thing I want to end this on is, man, does it take a lot of work to get a YouTube channel going? Um, even just these simple videos. So I, I don't know if I'll be doing as much uh, memeing as I did in the last devlog um, or, you know, even going forward. I like it. I think it's funny. I think it adds a lot of value. Um, but I also noticed that my recording quality is terrible on when I have the, the, um, the webcam much bigger on when it's not in this presentation mode right now. It's a 1080p camera. It's a Logitech, I think 960 something. Um, but I don't want to invest in like a really, really nice camera. Like I don't want a DSLR. Um, because I, I don't think that this is, that this component is that necessary. I think that I can be entertaining enough to warrant this webcam, but we'll see. I mean, I don't know. Um, depends on how good of a run I get um, with YouTube. But man, it's I've spent so much. You can see right here. So the editing, I, I edited for two and a half hours, the first devlog. And that was mainly in uh, Audition, getting the audio. Um, so I'm using Adobe. I have an Adobe subscription. I know I should be pirating it, but... I'm a good boy. So uh, I edited the devlog audio and that took quite a while, but luckily I have some podcasting experience and so that didn't take too long. But then I had to kind of go through, make sure everything sounded fine. Um, and then finally, the next day, day 22, I finally did the editing of the first devlog, uploaded it to YouTube. I created the banner on my YouTube channel, which is a simple like quote from the first devlog. And then I created the thumbnail. The thumbnail was super fun to start creating. Um, I don't know. There's there's a lot of stuff in there from Google. Um, so who knows? Maybe it'll get recorded for copyright and that would be a huge bummer. But hopefully with fair, fair use, that shouldn't be the, the, the case. So anyways, um, yeah, four hours and 40 minutes I spent uh, on all that. Now, all that will be much more streamlined going forward. But these are days that I wasn't able to... Uh, these are my weekend, right? So I wasn't able to work on the game, which I think was a big setback. Um, maybe not a setback because all, marketing is all necessary if you want to promote your game. However, um, I, I would have liked to, to do some coding. 